Hello and welcome back to this let's play of Planescape Torment with myself Waze and currently Mort and the Nameless One. First thing I want to apologize for the sound quality on the last video. I'm not sure what happened with my microphone sound settings but something had changed and it felt it sounded a bit distorted to me coming back. I'm not sure if it's my ears or not so I've tweaked it a little bit and hopefully that will fix it. In the meantime, we're in this buried village. We took a wrong turn, we took a wrong turn, and uh, we ended up here. Uh, after after dying and ended up on a new slab. So, let's see where we are. Let's talk to these buried villagers. No idea where we are. Let's find out. You see a ragged man clad in patchwork clothes. He reeks of smoke and trash and has a yellowish cast to his skin. He looks askew at you. What do you want from me, Cutter? Uh, just some questions, please. Make it fast, Cutter. I got mouths to feed. Okay, who who are you? Ain't important, Cutter. Slipped twixt the cracks too long ago, or maybe that was me da. One way or another, me just another one trying to make a living any way I can. Okay. Um, what are you doing exactly? Trying to make a living. What's it look like? Only I keep getting asked questions, and it's stopping me from that. You done yet? Suppose I am for now. I'll get much from him. Is this guy going to be the same? Uh, yep. Looks like it's exactly the same. Let's just ask the questions. Make it fast. Got mouths to feed. Yep. Fair enough. These aren't very talkative. Done. Come on, Mort. Let's uh, see where the hell we are. Village thug. Right now. Right now. I think we're going to avoid the village thugs. What the. Excuse me. Had him our way. Ku Yin. You see a drab man with perfectly moon face shape. He looks at you without expression and does not speak. He looks as though his voice would be as flat as a meadow. Greetings. I was hoping you could answer a few questions for me. What do you wish to know? Uh, what is this place? Tell me about it. I know nothing of it. I do not know this place. I have no name. I have no number. I have no memory of this place. I'm cold. I'm scared. This is strange to be so naked. I fear I will die. Okay, what do you mean by all of that? I once lived in a land of metal machines and doors that opened at a word. I dream of the pristine metal cities and the empty shells that are our people. I had a number and a name there, and now I have neither. Like all my kind, they are all I have. They are all I have had of my own all my life. They were stolen from me. Without them, I am nothing. I request your aid. Okay. I'll see what I can do, but I need some answers to some questions first. Updated my journal. What do you wish to know? Okay, tell me about yourself. Okay, that's the same thing you told me already. Uh, who has your name and number? The one who used to be Redeen. She stole them from me. I offered a shelter, the shelter of my name and number, and she stole them from me. They are mine, lawfully and by right. Find her. She's in this village. Okay, that's tough. Uh, or is that saying tough? That would seem a bit... That would seem a bit um, unhelpful, bearing in mind I need help. So, uh, I'll see what I can do. Just a few more questions. Tell me of Sigil. I know nothing of it. Okay, this is the same answer. Okay, so we're looking for this Redeen. Is it Redeen? Okay. Farewell for now. Mort, it looks like we're looking for a person. These thugs look a bit, um... They look a bit... A bit antsy. That's, uh... Take a look around. Is more thugs? Yeah. I don't... Th oh, oh dear. One of them has taken a disliking to us. Can we run away? Who's this? Redeen. You see a woman with a lined face and drab clothing. Her eyes are far away and there seems to be a new vitality rising up under her skin. As if she'd been given a new life. There's a pattern tattoo around her neck. She starts when you speak to her. Eh? What do you want? 
Just some questions. Mayhap I got answers for you, and mayhap I don't. Okay, tell me about this place. The Buried Village. Nice enough place, I suppose, if you don't mind the stench of corpses being torn open. Garbage heaped on the roof and the constant scurrying of rats around here. Much colder with only a name and no number to protect you, that's for sure. Well, tell me about your name. Me? I got two names now, and I'll show you only one. Don't want you stealing the new one. Haha. <laughs> You can call me Redeen, pet, and I'll hold this other name tight to myself, I will. Okay. Do, do, do. Uh, two names there. Eh? Must be nice to have them. I pop it. It is. Look. The man... That name used to belong to wants his name and number back. He's dying without them. Her voice grows shrill. Well, he can't have them. He offered them to me and I kept them. He never said nothing about no loan of them. And he never said he needed them back. He ain't getting them. You can go tell him so. He really needs an... He really needs a name. You can tell him he can have mine. The name Redeen should be good enough for anyone. Okay, well, look. If it wasn't good enough for you, why should it suffice for him? It's a world of difference between growing up in a name and having someone else's, dearie. A new attitude behind an old name can change it all. See what I've done with this one? Okay, I'll talk to him about it, but first, I'll, I want you to answer some more questions. Tell me about that tattoo. This squirmy thing? It's an identifying number. It's my number. Gave to me by a kind man who saw me cold without protection of numbers to back me up. Now I got it, and I'm happier than I've ever been before. Okay, how does that work exactly? Safety in numbers, and with safety comes warmth, and with warmth comes comfort. Numbers can do it all for you, dearie, as long as you respect their power. Okay. Let's go back to the dude, but looks like more we're going to have to fight first. Oh, great. Critical miss. I have a bad feeling about this. Okay, where is Mort gone? He's just behind me. Near death. Let's take this guy out then. Come back here. You started the fight. Okay. I don't like this running away stuff that they do. Right, Mort. Let's uh, take this one out because they're all after us anyway. Come on. Nameless one. And I'm in a bad way again. Do I have any healing? I do. Let's use it. I don't want to die again so soon. Uninjured. Badly injured. We will take this one. He's running away. This one more. You see that? Now, I don't know if enemies heal or not. Come on. Okay. Let's just let them go. They seem too fast for us. Okay. Did we try to get him? Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. Some coppers. That will do nicely. Okay, Mort. Let's uh, keep wandering. And see what else we have. This is a, a strange place. What have we got here? More buried villages, which are probably just going to talk to us about the same things in the same way. That's a question I wouldn't mind throwing out to everyone. Once you get those standard responses from the, all the people with the same name, sort of the generic sort of names, like Buried Villager, uh, is the dialogue all the same? Or should I speak to them again because I might get a different response? That would probably be useful information. I'll take the bandages. 
punch daggers. I have rooms, so I'll take them for now. Okay, one to four piercing. Pair of jagged dagger blades mounted on iron knuckles. The blades of jagged edges to allow them to deal additional piercing damage when the wearer strikes an opponent. Okay, only use use but only by fighters and thieves. I said I am thinking about possible mage run. I haven't uh okay, buried village guard. Talk to those in a minute. Let's see what else is around. <laughs> I have been thinking. That's the problem. When I get thinking. More coppers. Leg bone club. One to six crushing. I'm not sure I'm going to need that. Not usable by mages. I'm not a mage yet. What level am I? What level am I? Uh, I can't see it. That's the inventory. Okay, we will check that later on. Let's have a quick look around. Is there anything else down here? I think this is the extent of it. By the looks of it. Oh, no. Uh, another buried village guard. Bar. Who's Bar? You see a massive human dressed in cast off patchwork clothing and reeking of old ale. He is truly huge. It's obvious he was chosen for this job for his brawn, not his brains. What do you want? Um, what lies beyond this gate? The guard looks at you for a moment and sneers. Your mother's bedchambers. We got to keep the gate down because the traffic was getting to be too much, you know? He roars with laughter. Pike off before you join the dead is down below. Okay, just a few questions. Um, who are you exactly? None of your damn business, frankly. Pike off. Okay. Would I be able to go down there? The guard glances at you, then shakes his head. Yeah, yeah. We're all just begging to go down there. Look, you definitely ain't from round here. Pike off. I think that's all I'm going to get from this guy. What are you doing exactly? What does it look like I'm doing? Washing your underclothes? Get out of here, you stupid burk. Okay, fair enough. If we, this guy's huge. I want to try opening the gate. But I'm thinking, if we try opening the gate, is he likely to attack me? Too many fights. Too many fights at the moment. Let's just, let's take it easy I know I said someone in the comments said about the game's about taking risks which is fine I just I don't want to spend the whole episode um, getting beaten up and dying okay this is a badly injured thug let's can we finish him off will he run away he's running away okay good we like people running away from us we're going to chase him at the moment where's this other guy the one we were talking to lost his name. Was he just a buried villager? I can't remember what his name was. Uh, see, no, this is going to mean nothing there. More thugs. These, these are probably going to attack me if I go near them. Hmm. I can't remember the other guy's name or whether he was just a buried villager. I think he was just a buried villager, was he? Uh, or is it... No, it was this guy, Ku Yin. That's who it was, yes. Have you located the woman with my name and number? She will tell you she won the name from me, but she did not. She stole it. I require my name and number. She's in the village somewhere. I have, but... Unfortunately, she doesn't want to give it up. He pales for a moment. She must. They are mine. She stole them from me. I request your assistance. Um, You're getting it. I require assistance. Any assistance you give me will be remembered with gratitude. Please help. Okay. Nothing new in there. I don't even know how we would get the number off the woman. Does it mean killing her? Let's go and find her again. See if there's any new dialogue that comes up. Great villager, collector. Let's have a look. Where did she go? There she is, Radine. 
She looks blankly as you return and then shakes herself out of her daze as she does the tattoo around her neck squirms. You again, eh, Cutter? I tell you, I won't give the name and number back. Tell you what, using this name and numbers increase me fortunes. I'll pay good money for it, and he can buy himself a new, nice new one. How's that? Uh, let's try this. Okay, how much are you willing to give? How about a nice 20 coins? That should tide the wee deer over till he can get a new set. Be a deer and go ask him if that's what he wants. Uh, okay, I'll go and check it with him. Do I buy it from her? Hmm. Now, I haven't thought about what type of character I am. Am I a good guy? Am I not? I'm feeling from the playthrough so far that it's definitely going to go more along the, the, the lines of, of a good guy, I think. Let's try and fix it first. Let's try and fix it first. Another part of me says, take it and see what happens. Hmm. Although, if it can be given back, could I maybe get it and... Uh, No, she doesn't want to give up the name. She's only going to pay for it. So I'd just be taking the money. So no. Okay, I'll go check with him. Okay. Where's Kujin? That's the enemy. We won't worry about him for now. Oh no, are they coming for me as well? I hope not. Uh, the despondent man looks up to you. A glimmer of hope in his eyes, yet he speaks as emotionally as ever. Has she given you my name and number? She has offered money, has she not? I cannot live. Money means nothing without a name. Get me my name. Has she given it? His eyes crawl across your face, watching intently. She has offered money for them. No money can buy a name. No amount can buy a number. Coin is scant consolation for identity. Surely you can understand. Well, yeah, I can understand that. Okay, leave it with me. I'll do what I can. These thugs are bothering me. Hovering with intent. Redeem. Her face crumples as she sees you again. He has refused again, hasn't he? And sure you've come to take back what's rightfully mine. Um. Any other options? You don't need his kind of number to live. Make your own number if you need some. If you need one to keep you warm. I suppose you're right. I've been a bad person. Sure I have, and I can't keep his this here. She peels the rippling tattoo from around her neck and hands it to you. She shivers as she does so. And you can tell him his name now. He will, He was and will be Ku, Ku Yin. Yin, not Jin. Ku Yin. Now let me go. Okay, she's been quite reasonable. Okay, here's some jink for your trouble. Buy something to keep you warm. My thanks, Cutter. She pockets the money, looking more drab by the moment as the magic of the tattoo leaves her. It will be best for me to be leaving here then, and with the aid of Jink you gave me, mayhap we'll meet again under happier circumstances for the both of us. Okay, farewell, Redeen. 30 copper? Look, it was worth it. We've got this man his name back. I think that's uh, maybe some good deeds might actually come back to help us later. Let's go talk to Ku Yin. The despondent man looks up to you, a glimmer of hope in his eyes. Okay. It's the same as he said before. Uh, money means nothing without a name. Get me my name. Has she given it? His eyes crawl across your face, watching intently. Yes, she has. May I have them? Yes, your name is Ku Yin. Take your number. Okay. I thank you for my name and number. Yes, Ku Yin. Yes. But no. I now realize I no longer require a number here. I will find myself a new number if necessary. What? I give you my old number. It can help you. It's a mantle of law. It is protection. Do you accept it? Absolutely, yeah. Let's find out what this does. Let it warm you. Trust in it. It will protect you. Farewell. He turns and begins to walk away from you. Let's see if he's got will answer any more questions. Updated my journal. Uh no, they're all the same questions as before. Let's have a look at the journal. Uh, what have we got? 
Here we go. I returned Ku Yin's name and number to him. He offered me his number and said it would warn me and protect me. Okay. Okay. Nothing there. Let's have a look at the inventory. Junk. The number of Ku Yin. Protection from chaotic creatures. This is a tattoo of a number, an intricate weaving of ink and flesh. It squirms when held as if sought out a as if it sought out a host. It is the number of Ku Yin, a professional identif identifier that radiates law. When applied, the tattoo works itself into the skin of its owner, protecting it against the depredations of strongly chaotic creatures. It cannot be used as someone of chaotic alignment. Now, I can't even remember if I chose an alignment. Okay, how do I wear this is the question. in here here we go okay options uh okay statistics screen what have we got a uh, level four uh fist and edge weapon weapon proficiencies not seeing any Ability bonuses or anything like that, or resistances. Okay, we'll run it. We'll run with it for now. Right, I want to try and see if we can get out of this place. It looks like the only other place we can go is down here, and there is a huge guy down there I don't really want to talk to. The buried villager. Well, the buried villagers seem to be the only people in here. Nothing else of note. Can I just walk out? I can, apparently. Maybe I could have walked down the other way. Do we try it? And then maybe just run away? Curiosity abounds. That's, uh... Let's see if we can. It's not locked. Door is <laughs> it's not locked. The door is locked. It is locked. Okay. We will leave it so. And we will get out of this place. We have a tattoo. Not sure. Farad's court. Okay. Maybe dying was rather fortuitous. I'm gone. Let's see where we're at. What do we have in here? Wary. We are wary. Nothing down here. Who's the... Farad. Oh my god. Before you is an elderly... An elderly man leaning heavily upon a crutch. His left leg is twisted as if he tried to walk two directions at once and paid the price. <laughs> His maggoty colored skin is bunched heavily upon his skull and is flecked with liver spots. He is mumbling and smacking his lips as his eyes make a circuit of the room. Uh, hello? Updated my journal. <clears throat> Aha! The man's eyes light up as he hears your voice. Tisn't my steady crop of jink come to Farrah's waiting arms again. Greetings, corpse. He smiles a wicked grin. Have you come to ask Farrah for another jaunt into the mortuary walls? Um... I'm not sure about yes, Farad of Eternal. Are, are the arrangements all in order? I have no idea what these arrangements are. Farad, I've come for information. I've been told that you know something about me. Know something about you? The light in Farad's eyes dims. He studies you, mumbling slightly as his eyes flicker up and down your frame. Corpse? No? Yes? His eyes meet yours. Ah, no. Okay, what is it, Farad? Farad's studying you with a dead, even gaze. It isn't a mummer's fair, corpse. No time for games. No time for Farad to play the wheel. What are you asking such questions for? I'm going to tell the truth. I've forgotten myself, and I was told to seek you out, that you would know something of me. Eh? Farad licks his lips. They make a rasping sound like dry parchment on sand. 
Now, who told you such a thing, corpse? Well, no one told me exactly. There were these tattoos on my back, and they told me to seek you out if I ever forgot myself. Ah, so little said, so much told. Farad falls silent, and suddenly you have a feeling that Farad is dis dissecting you like a corpse on a mortuary slab. I know much you would know. Much, yes, much indeed. Farad smiles slowly, the folds of his flesh on his face peeling back like a curtain. Okay, just would you mind telling me? Farad licks his lips, then settles himself upon his crutch like a vulture. No, no, not free, the question you ask. His pasty white hands tap the edge of his crutch. Much I can tell you, but telling has a cost. Okay, go on. Farad taps the flagstones with his with his crutch and sneers. This village is not all that lies buried beneath Ragpicker's Square. Oh yeah, okay, and? Chambers, vaults, corridors filled with the dead, all asleep in their coffins. Somewhere in those halls, somewhere there, lies something misplaced, something mine. Okay, what is it? A small thing, a trinket, such a trifle. As Farad speaks, his words start echoing as if two people were speaking. You know you've heard them before from your own lips. Okay, this must be some kind of memory. It's a sphere made of bronze, ugly, feels like an egg to the touch, and smells of rotten custard. Am I right? Farad falls deathly silent for a moment, then nods. Yeah. How much do you hide from me, corpse? He chuckles. Did you return to see if I remember what it is I want? Look, do you know where this sphere is? Ah. Farad's sigh is like shifting sand. And why do you suppose I ask you to look for it, corpse? I do not know where it is. I know it's buried deep. Far deeper than any villager has ever gone. Farad tusks. It may be in the catacombs where waters run deep, deep. Okay, why don't you just get one of your collectors to search for it? <clears throat> because the corridors need no more dead from this village, Farad tusks. Strong, fast, clever, these are qualities my villagers do not have. They go below, they do not return. Farad glances at you. Perhaps the dead will welcome their own, hmm? That's what I think, corpse. Okay. Very well. I'll do it because I need the information you have. But I want to know what I'm buying with this trinket. There's a lot of knowing rattling around in my brain box, corpse. He holds up a withered finger. One of them is this bit of wisdom. Everyone wants something, whether they know it or not. There's much I know about you. Much that you would want to know. Okay. Fair enough. In exchange for what you know, I'll see if I can find this sphere for you. Um, I don't want... I'm not going to threaten him. Not at this stage. So, no truths or bluffs. Mort, looks like we're going on an adventure. Very well. A deal struck, a deal made. Farad cracks his crutch sharply against the flagstones. A sphere for a peek inside my brain box. Now, corpse, there's no time to waste. Go to the gate at the south and east. Tell those slumbering fools to open it for you. Make haste, make haste. Okay, just a few other questions Update first. My journal. Then ask. Farad smacks his crutch on the cobbles, as if passing sentence. Come, come, corpse. Time's short and so's my patience. Um. Yeah. When I awoke in the mortuary, I was missing a journal. Do you know where it is? Farad squints at you, the folds of flesh coming down almost over his eyes. A journal you had when we spoke last. Has it lost itself? Farad, Farad chuckles dryly. These eyes have not seen it, but keep them peeled, I will. I'd love to read such a magnificent work. Okay, a few other questions. Then ask. When you greeted me, you said something about taking me on a jaunt to the mortuary. What did you mean by that exactly? You tell me, corpse. Perhaps the dusties that live there are more you're liking than some sweet-bosomed wench. Farad taps his crutch on the floor, the clacking echoing throughout the court. Most forgiving of the dusties to let you stride in and out of there as you please. 
considering you don't have the decency to stay in the dead book. Okay, but if I wanted to get into the mortuary, then why? Updated my journal. Farad scoffs. Corpse, you were so bent to get in there, now you spill that you don't even know why you wanted in there in the first place. Sometimes it's a wonder why the planes turn. Okay, let's see if there's anything else I can ask him. I also heard a rumour, Farad, that you f found a wealth of bodies. Where do they come from, exactly? Does a mage tell the secrets of his craft? So it is with the collector. Farad frowns, studying you. Perhaps I will tell you. But you must promise that it is for your ears only. Okay. Hard to know whether I keep this, because if it's... I'm going to... I'm going to lie here. Because if this guy's... I may have to tell someone later when I find out who I am and how this all fits together. So I I can't... Hmm. Hmm. Do I vow or do I lie? This is the question. I suppose right now in good conscience and faith with where I am and not knowing who I am and being lost and stuff, I could change my mind later. But right now, I think I think I would vow. Okay, what I hear is for my ears only. Updated my journal. Very well. Farrah taps the flagstones with his crutch and sneers. This village is not all that lies buried beneath Ragpicker's Square. Is he just going to tell me what he's already told me? Yep, chambers, vaults, and corridors. Uh, all asleep in their coffins. Okay, where do all these dead come from? Farad fixed you with a lopsided stare. Corpse, corpse, everything dies. Life so short, but death lasts for so very, very long. Many people, many deaths. His, st his stare travels past you. Such a waste for their deaths to be useless in a Dusty's arms, eh? What do you mean by that? Updated my journal. Farad smiles greedily. Not all the dead that goes to the mortuary gate is fed to the furnace corpse. The Dusties bury some of the dead in the city's bowels. Under the village. So near, so close, is such a place. I would have been a fool not to see opportunities. Okay. So you rob the catacombs of the dead and... The dustman placed there, sell them back to the dustman, and they bury them again? Farad nods, then chuckles lightly. The sound is like shifting sand. These catacombs are as deep as a dusty's pockets. Okay. I think I've heard enough for now. I will take my leave. Right. I think we need to look at the journal. Let's have a look. Nothing in the missing journal. Uh... These mausoleums dead. I've agreed to help man in Ragbook Square find out more about Farad. See, we need endless supply of courses. Okay, that's the so it's just the journal. Let's see what we've got. Finally found Farad buried village. Uh, place doesn't smell better than the hive. At least Farad might have some information. Agreed to descend into the catacombs of Farad. That must be the gate that the big, the huge guy is guarding. I'm going to guess. Possibly. He thinks the sphere is located in the deepest part of the catacombs where the water has drowned out the passageways. The entrance to the first part of the catacombs is in the southwest, southeast portion of the... South, yeah, that would be right. Southeast portion of the village, past the gate. Okay. So, what was I looking for in... That must be linked to... The vision I had of the number 42... So I'm going to have to get back into the mortuary again at some point, I think. I'm having a, getting a feeling that my journal isn't in the mortuary. Uh, I've promised Farad I wouldn't say where he was getting the bodies from. Hmm. Now I need to think about that one from a character point of view. Would, will I or won't I? Will I or won't I? Right now I need Farad on side, so at the moment... 
Based on the tattoos on my back, I should trust Farad, even though I don't. Hmm. Found out where that old ghoul Farad is getting his wealth of dead bodies from. He's getting them from the catacombs, blah, blah, blah. Okay, yep. Yeah. Right. Let's have a... Let's have a hunt around here just to see if there's anything else. Doesn't seem to go anywhere. No, we're done there. Yep, I think we're going back into the village and we're going to look to head through the gate. I would say they are all in the employ of Farad. Okay, nothing else in here. Nothing up here. Hmm. Right, let's go out to the village and see. Okay. All right. Here we go. Let's speak to the guard. The guard gives you a once over with bored, half closed eyes. If you want to use the gate, bars your cutter. He nods towards Bar standing in front of the gate. If not, then leave me be, will ya? Okay, let's talk to Bar. What do you want this time? Uh, Farad gave me his leave to go down to the catacombs. I need you to open the gate. He swings open the gates and get going, Burke. Don't waste our time. Right. Into the catacombs we go. Right, Mort. How are we doing? Mort's a little bit damaged, but he does have a lot of health. Okay. Let's see. Yes. This is going to be an adventure, all right? And something tells me there will be lots of fighting. There's a lot of stuff going on in here already. Things to look at, things to read, things to discover. So I think that seems like the right moment to end this episode. We are making some progress, but we're still none the wiser about who who I am or where my journal is or, or why I was trying to get into the mortuary. We've, we've got more questions than answers, even though we found Farad. So let's see what the catacombs uncover for us. Thank you all very much for watching. I do hope you're well, and until next time, take care.